Nice, right on. All right, so we're gonna get right into the ship here. And I'm just gonna go and throw the TikTok live on because we're doing two in one right now, as we always do. There we go. It's a good angle. And there we go. Going live. All right, so we've got our our, our mass um, stain. We have coffee stain. They're all dried up, and we are. We started with the inside. Get a nice base coat of brown, which is. Turned out to be pretty, pretty black, but I'll show you here. We can um, we can actually take all these like these mass pieces are all magnetically put on here, so we can just uh, you know it's pretty satisfying to snap those on and off. But then I was also thinking for the um, for the mesh part, we're just using um, some. I think this is for making rugs, but uh, yeah, so the rugs so that they they can all pop off and that you can you know, um, snap those back on if you want to play with or without the sails on there just in case you want to get more visibility. So we're going to take those off, put those there because we're going to be base coating this thing because it's time to get this thing painted. Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty long for you. Um, but we've got some other extra things printed, got a steering wheel printed. Or, what is this? I don't know what you call that thing. What is it, what is it called? I'm blanking on the name, but anyway. Um, um, yeah, we're going to put that up there. we got a bunch of cannons here that we've uh, printed off and painted black. And I even got some of the, a couple of these. I need to print off some more. Um, but we've got some of these. Um, uh, these are for the cannons, for them to sit in. Cannon wagons or whatever you want to call them. So we'll be we'll paint and glue those together too. So, yeah. So yeah, we can take this off. So we've got a couple of sections to paint here. So we've got our masts, we've got the top section, we've got the captain's quarters here and those doors that swing open, and then the, the hull of the ship. So we've got, we've got the work cut out for us, but it's gonna be nice. We're just gonna be base coating it all in a nice brown black. So I'm gonna be showing you how to make that right now. We started to do this already. Um, that was a while ago. Life is kind of a bit nutty recently. Um, I'm just getting over a cold. Don't worry, not COVID. Um, so just getting over that. And then, you know, buying a house is really stressful. So yeah, anyway, let's get to it. So I'm gonna grab uh, my, my, um, <clears throat> my Mod Podge here. And we're gonna be grabbing some <clears throat> brown. So, let's see here. We got real brown. I think we're probably going to grab some of this. Um, maybe just like a cheaper brown and then my black <clears throat> to make a nice uh, base coat for this. So, I know some, um, some guys that actually just like dump the paint into here, uh, but since I've been using, you know, like sometimes I want a base coat in black, sometimes I want a base coat in brown, um, you'd be surprised how far um, just a little bit goes. So yeah, that was my pairing conservative there. And <clears throat> then we're just gonna dump in some paint. There's no real like set ratio that you have to do any of this by, but, um, yeah, so I'm just getting a good amount of brown in there. This is kind of like some of the cheaper brown, which I use for my base because it's not, it's not as crucial for it. You just never want to have satin anywhere. So, um, and then I'm just gonna grab a popsicle stick. A popsicle stick. My voice is sounding super deep. Is this resin or poly? Um, this is all styrofoam. Um, XPS phone, so yeah. 
So we're just gonna stir that together, and that's a lot of black and then a lot of browns. Let's see what we come up with. It's going pretty gray, so I'm gonna wanna add some more brown in there. I want it darker because I do want a darker, you know, I, you always want a darker base coat. Um, so I'm just gonna show the, you know, see. It's getting a little gray because the black and the, and the well, it's, it's, it's white, so. Hey, what's up? Are they 3D printed? No, the, the whole thing is styrofoam. Some of the smaller, finer details, like the cannons and stuff like that, are 3D printed. Um, but everything, um, the boat, it's all uh, XPS uh, insulation foam. Yeah. So, just add a little bit more brown. Let's see what kind of color we get there. I might need a little more black too because it's a little it's a little light, I think. But it dries darker. I don't know, just a drop more. There we go. So yeah. Oh thank you. Oh thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. I wanna be making more. It's a it's a crazy time in life right now, but I'm I'm doing what I can. What I can. So, all right, I like that. It looks good. Time to grab a brush and start slapping this on. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. And the nice thing about foam is it's pretty forgiving with all this kinds of stuff. So I thought maybe, <clears throat> depending on how we go. So I was like, I've got some like bigger brushes. I thought maybe like you could really like, cause it's such a, like there's such big areas that maybe I would give the bigger brush a try to see if we can cover off some more of the, <clears throat> the area faster. But great content. Oh, thanks guys. Good soup. <laughs> great. Uh, well, thanks guys. Yeah, so we just, oh, that's a nice color brown right there. So we, we always do a wash, and if you want, I got a YouTube channel, shows you how to make all the stuff and do this in detail, and if you're watching from YouTube, you, you've probably already seen all of them, so, um, yeah, we're uh, trying to go live with this entire ship. I know it's been a long time um, in the build because it was during my, my move here and during some crazy stuff, but we're gonna get it done. We're gonna see how fast we can get it done. So, yeah, this brush seems to work. But yeah, like so, um, any any areas that I don't kind of get fully, and you kind of see the white, we'll be doing a wash on the whole thing so that um, it can, it's gonna seep into all the little cracks, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be <clears throat> it's gonna darken the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, some more brushing, right? Yeah, exactly. I just want to sit, sit with it at the table and stare at it. <laughs> Thanks. What's your YouTube channel? Fantasy Forge Miniatures. Yeah, yeah, Fantasy Forge Miniatures for everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm, this brush is probably really loud, so enjoy the ambiance. Dunk and go. So I'm just gonna try and do like the base coating as fast as possible. And we go from there. But yeah, then I, if you want to watch my YouTube channel for the um, for how to make the washes, I'm just going to be going through and just, it's going to be a pretty heavy spray um, for the washes um, just to get in all the cracks and all that. So it's going to be good to like, it'll be a nice cleanup. So I'm not, I'm not going to be too crazy careful with this. Um, my washes are usually just um, ink, uh, ink, water, and flow aid is my go-to. I really wish you could spray this stuff, but what kind of foam do you use? Um, do you use your tools to get wood grain wood? Um, yeah, so I use my hot wire tool um, for cutting foam, and it has kind of these edges on it that you can um, use to make really good wood texture. And I've got a whole video on all of my textures and how and how and what tools, so for sure to check it out if you want more details on that. But um, yeah, my hot wire tool is 
is what I use for the wood. Uh, the foam is XBS insulation foam. Um, so it's, um, it's literally what you can get at the hardware store uh, for insulating your home. So anywhere where you sell like home building supplies is basically you can get this stuff. Um, and this is almost made entirely out of it. I do use a little bit of foam core on this one uh, from the dollar store. So cheap, cheap, cheap. I'd be afraid to accidentally crush it uh, in parts. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it definitely happens. I've definitely crushed in pieces. Um, and I have a video of me crushing a piece, but that was intentional. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, uh, it's very easy to just repair. If a piece breaks off, you just glue it back on, throw a toothpick in it for extra structural support, and you're good to go. Um, people often ask, they're like, oh, it's going to break, it's so fragile. I was like, yeah, maybe, kind of, it depends on how you handle them, but foam is pretty durable stuff, so I always say, just have fun with it. Um, and if it, if it breaks, then you just fix it up. Everything's fixable. So, I was afraid of that too. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely a fear. Um, and it's always good to be careful with things, but I just wouldn't let it get in the way of actually having fun with it, with the piece, you know? So we're making some decent progress on here, because this is going to be exciting, because the thing is, the paint should go fairly quick, because the ship is all wood, you know? Um, so it's very much the same, you know, it's not like painting, you know, stone, wood, stucco, gotta keep everything, you know, it's very much, um, <clears throat> similar textures. I mean, we can, it's gonna be, it's gonna be in the details that it all comes out, but, um, for this first step, it's great to just get it on. It'll be even better once we get that wash on it, okay? So, yeah, just trying to be aggressive with the, with the base coat so that we can get on with it. And some of the tighter areas, if I have to go on with a smaller brush or whatever, I'll, I'll do that. Um, but we're going to be pretty liberal. And, you know, uh, this first base coat adds a lot of structural integrity to it. So the foam itself, um, yeah, it can be a little bit weak, but um, this, like, uh, Mod Podge is a sealer, and sealer finisher, or whatever you want to call it, um, and it adds a lot, it's basically like a white glue that you can paint on, um, and it adds a lot of structural integrity to your foam, so that's definitely going to add, add a lot to the piece here, as far as, yeah, durability and strength. That looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we'll go flip it around here so that we can kind of get in on that other side. Clean it up as we go around. Yeah, one thing when you're doing it on though is you don't want to leave any area too thick and globbed because it will it will you know um, take away from the texture. Uh, if you if you leave it on too thick and it dries and it kind of blurs your texture a little bit, so you want to make sure you uh, brush it out pretty good. But it's yeah, it's pretty good. So let's get this. So these are just like little dummy masks that I put in there to show that the masks go down into the hull. And you know, you know, maybe we're gonna add some hammocks down here, or some cages, or, you know, crates and things. It's all in the detail, but as far as the ship goes. Um, we've got it locked up here pretty good. Yeah. Hope you have a great time doing this. Oh, thank you. Hope I have a great time too. My voice is nice and gravelly because I'm just, I'm on the upswing of a, of a nasty cold. No COVID, but, uh, yeah, it's that fall season, everybody's getting something. So, yeah. And I always love building pieces that have, like, interiors and, like, you know, more that meets the eye. So when you go and you're like, hey, you know, you can take this uh, one piece and you can kind of, you know, um, even, like, something like, uh, 
like this piece, like the tower piece here, I don't know. You see that, that it, it, like, uh, you know, it comes apart and then you can play each level. And then I even thought about like having alternative tops for it and things like that so that your piece can, uh, you know, um, and then just snaps together. But so that you can like play on different levels and things like that. And just um, have a lot of fun with it. So that's what I like to do. So that's why I made the, the interior of the hull and things like that. So, yeah. Oops. Um, yeah, so what the soothing sound of this brush put you to sleep. And I'm definitely finding that using this bigger brush is a better idea. I think I started with a smaller brush because I was like, yeah, I'll get in all the cracks, but um, it's better to do the broad strokes with the big one and then go back. But uh, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to answer them. I'm trying to look at the, the feet as much as, I, as much as I can here. couple in there. Hey, howdy, hi, hello. Hey, everybody. Yeah, so I'm live on YouTube right now as well, as well as TikTok. So if, uh, if, you, if you're missing this and you want to go back, all of this, all my lives for building this ship are on, um, on my YouTube. So that, uh, yeah, if you miss it anywhere, you can always go back and watch it. Watch anything you miss. Skip through what you want. Get the content that you want. And I will try to deliver. So this this ship's been leaning for a while, and I'm just happy to get a base coat on here and get it wrapping up because I want to add it to the collection and I want to keep on building more stuff. I want to I want to know what you guys always. I love suggestions. Always shoot me suggestions of things that you think would be cool. What's up? Hello. Hi. Uh, can you make an ocean house thing for Team Seas? An ocean house thing for Team Seas? I'm not sure I know what that is. Um, an ocean, teams, ocean house thing for Team Seas. Is that, a, is that a game? Team Seas? Or is that like... Um, I mean, Ocean House sounds sounds cool. Could add some. <clears throat> Keep going with the ocean thing with this with the pirate thing, right? Because this is, of course, a pirate ship. But you can use it for anything. That's what, what I also like about my pieces is they're not. Um, I don't like to have them specifically for one thing. I like to be able to use them for you know multiple campaigns or, or scenarios or whatever. So you know maybe this is a pirate ship, but maybe you need a ship for. Um, you know, you're a colonel or whatever, so it's not pirate. Um, but, you know, you can use this ship for both, so that it's, you know, you don't have to have two separate individual things for everything, so. Yeah. Uh, kind of like for Harry Potter, a house on an island in the middle of the ocean. Oh. Oh, that's fun. I was like, I have done some Harry Potter themed stuff. I did the Weasley's Burrow. Um, be sure to check that out. Yeah, I did that. I did that one a little while ago. Um, but yeah, yeah, house in the ocean. That'd be fun. For sure. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's keep rocking here. I think next time we we hit the outside. Slapping that on. Trying not to bust stuff in those can holders. There we go. Have you tried the new foam train primer? New foam train primer. No, I haven't. A flying pirate ship. Exactly. Love it. It's been months since I last saw you live, by the way. I finished my tower. Oh, so cool. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, there's been, I mean, I've been on and off a little bit. I've been working on 
Um, I've, still, I've done a couple laps, but I've definitely been a little bit less active because of uh, uh, my move and um, uh, buying a house. I got sick here, just getting over that, so nice fun squeak of the phone here. <laughs> sure you're all enjoying. A <clears throat> uh, dollar a pound of trash, Mr. Beast made a video on it. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm totally in the mood for Captain Crunch now. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, I have not tried the new paint, the new terrain foam primer. Um, I have. Um, there is a. There is a. There is a foam primer that um, didn't use aerosol because aerosol is corrosive to foam. Um, but I have tried it. The thing that I still like hard to beat is the fact that. Um, Mod Podge has a lot of structural properties that are really good for um, terrain building. Um, you know, like the thick glue actually really helps. Where I find is the, 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 the spray uh, does a great job. It's a lot faster coating, but it doesn't have that structural component that really like solidifies your piece like Mod Podge. So I'd be interested to see how it does against that. But congrats on the house by Oh, thanks so much. The primer is by uh, Game Master. Might be right up your alley. I will definitely check it out for sure. Have you tried Warhammer? I I haven't. Um, I uh, love my D and D. Um, and with Warhammer, I find that you have to buy a lot of stuff. You have to buy a lot of minis, and um, it's it's kind of like that. A little bit more of the um, um, kind of set um, things sets and, and collecting and painting minis, which is awesome. I love painting minis and I love miniatures and stuff like that. Um, but I like to print my own. Um, and I'm sure there's stuff out there. I know there's stuff out there that you can, but um, I like the story um, and that. If you, li if you like to battle, um, totally. It's awesome. But yeah. Uh, why buy minis when you can resin print your own art? Yeah, for sure. A beach should cut in half. Oh, awesome. Um, how many mm to feet? Um, it's it's roughly on a 30, um, 30 millimeter scale. So, um, I'm not totally sure where that works out to. That was like an inch is five feet. I, I'm trying to think about how to work that backwards, but. <clears throat> Start to look more and more like a ship. Pirate. Pirate's life for me. Considering I actually caught the live hi, how much research did you do for the ship, or is it more of a fancy whatever floats your boat type of thing? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, and favorite pirate because that's important. Uh, important when your pirate theme stuff. Oh yeah, what's my favorite pirate? Um, well, the zero research on ships. Um, I think uh, we did some on the fly because I've been doing this live. Um, some on the fly was, hey, which way do the deck boards run? And then someone was like, they run this way. And then we're like, no, they run this way. And so we finally found the answer and I used that. So that's about as much research as I've done. I mean, I, I have a general idea of what ships look like, so but there is zero um, accuracy in this thing. Yeah, zero. It was pretty... I love to wing all of my builds, so... Just trying to clean up some of that extra, extra paint there so it doesn't glob. You never want to glob because that will ruin your texture. Look at that, that's starting to, I love how the painting makes it come to life. It starts like, starts looking like wood, starts looking like a ship, starts, yeah, coming alive. Yeah, good. The shop is looking great. Oh, thank you. Well, guys, okay, I'm not at my new house yet. Um, I'm just living with my in-laws for now until, um, well, that popped off, no worries. Um, until we get possession of the house soon, and, uh, uh um, possession of the house soon, 
and, uh, and there's going to be a full D&D room. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. It's going to be really theme it out. Oh, dude, look at that ship. Look at that ship coming together. Hey, thanks for the follow there. Appreciate it. So, yeah. I had a rough doodle. I don't have it anymore. I threw it out. But I had a rough doodle of what I wanted the ship to kind of look like. But it's a very basic, like, I was like, hey, this is what a ship looks like. So I started off with the base and then just tried to, like, glue on some boards. Just textured a lot, a lot of boards. And then just started sticking them on, kind of made a rough hull skeleton type deal. <laughs> and then just started going to town. So yeah, it's not uh, it's not the scale or anything crazy. <coughs> so I'm gonna flip this around now. Rocking the big brush was uh, the right choice. I'm telling you. Definitely the right choice. You're making a great time on this. I'm very excited. You know, it, it does take momentum to get a piece done, especially one this big. Um, nice color for the ship. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be sweet when we start dry brushing. It's really gonna pop, add that wash in. But I'm, yeah, I'm really happy with this color here. Um, but yeah, it does take a lot of, um, you know, especially with somebody like, I have diagnosed ADHD and, um, and it's, it's things like I love, I just like, I love the idea of starting this crazy, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna build a massive ship. And then I'm like, oh, but what about this? And, oh, you know, like, um, you guys know, I was like, I got, I fell down the hole of, you know, hand paint or, you know, hand drawing on my, on my tablet, um, uh, battle maps. And I was like, oh, this is sweet. And then I'm like, oh, um, you know, what a, like, I was like, oh man, wouldn't that be sweet? As I'm working on that, I was like, wouldn't that be cool if, um, you know, it, what if they could, instead of me drawing them, what if they could randomly generate? So. Um, I was like, hey, time to learn uh, Python. Uh, you know, I, I program in JavaScript for web development for a living. So, but I was like, that's no good to write a, you know, if I want it to be like on a game or something. Um, so I, um, I hop into Python because it's, it's, it's a really easy language to pick up and had some good visuals. Uh, and I wrote a random dungeon generator using some, some algorithms and stuff. And I'm like, that's super cool. And then I'm like, oh yeah, but all this stuff. And so I'm like, I'm just flying all over the board. Oh, this ship has been a journey for sure. Yeah, it's been a journey. So yeah, I'm just, I'm always all over the board. Um, and hopefully you guys can track along with me and are interested in similar things. I do like to keep things related to fantasy fun you know, battle maps for D&D, and dungeon generators for, you know, D&D, and printing minis, and making train for D&D, so hopefully that I get to, uh, you know, tabletop gaming enthusiasts, you know, hold your attention that way. Uh, sometimes it's not always straight up train building, but I'm trying. And then I'll always come back and be like, oh, I should build this because it's really sweet. And then I see the ship and I'm like, I want to finish you. So I'm going to finish projects. I, I do finish projects and I will continue to. And for all my ADHD friends out there with me, you can feel my struggle. So today is the ship. I'm really excited to get the um, get that dry brush in there. Let's see what that that's gonna make the texture pop. Dry brushing just makes the texture pop right out. That's the best part. Happy little 
Happy little highlights. And the fun about the live is that you guys get to see, like, um, you get to see the mistakes and the things. Like, I remade the base for this ship, like, three times because I was like, it's too fat. It's too, uh, it's, I don't know, thin, whatever. I have to go back and watch. But it was, like, a bunch of, like, I had trim and trim. And I was like, oh, that's quite right. And shape is weird. And it's too tall. And, yeah. So we eventually got it to here. But you can see that, like, the foam is forgiving. And... And your imperfections either add character or they get hidden by detail. And, and you know, as my buddy over at Trash Dragon Hobby says, uh, he always says, CJ always says, uh, there's nothing a little moss can't hide. So, I like that. Nothing a little moss can't hide. All right, that is looking good. Now let's just finish off the front section here. Stir the ship. I think that's what it's called. There's starboard, port side, and stern. Do you think that has anything to do with the word stern being like, he was really stern with that person in the stern of the ship? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, hey, Jay. You're on YouTube, too. Uh, I can see more texture than before just with the paint, right? Yeah. Can it float in water? I don't believe it can. Um, well, I mean, I believe it would float, but um, it's foam. It would float. I don't know if it would float upright because I don't think a flat piece of foam just floats. But maybe it would, actually. I don't know. I don't know if I really want to try it, though, when the amount of time that's gone into this sucker. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll feel adventurous at some point. I get in trouble when I, when I wreck my build, so, um, I did that one time with one I really didn't like, I have a video and I stomp it, just to show the structural te integrity of my builds. People didn't like that, so, I don't want to, I don't want to upset anyone. And especially with a build that took this long. This is a, it's a lengthy build for me. Nice to see you working on the boat. Yeah, I know, right? And I was like, where the frig is the boat? And that kind of... Uh, she's long overdue. So we're just going to get it out. Alright. These doors are going to be fun. Because they do swing open, so I have to kind of like paint them and then open them to make sure that they don't, you know, glue and get painted shut. hard with them because um, they have toothpicks for hinges. That's how I did these. Super, super light. Um, boat is looking good. Oh, thank you. Nice. Thank you very much. Right. Do -do. Just get the inside of the captain's quarters here. Again, yeah, it's really nice that the whole build is just kind of, it's mostly wood, so we can do a nice, nice patch with this. A lot of the times I'll do my base coating in black, um, especially if they're like stone, stone based, because um, that's a good, it's a good, that's yeah, just a good base coat for 
the darker colors. This one's brown, so we've got a brown base coat and we're halfway there. We're skipping a step. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, this one, honestly, this is, this, this is, I, I, I say this is the biggest build that I've ever done. I have done, um, I've done my church. So it's, not, it's not a cathedral level, but it's a church, so it's a, yeah, with every brick. That one was a big build, but this one had, like, this one has the interior, so that was, <clears throat> the church was one of my early builds, and it didn't have an interior, so every brick was still hand-laid, but, uh, I'd call the ship bigger build because it actually does take up more space and it's um, it's got interiors and a lot more detail. So yeah, yeah. Jeez. This, this is the, the biggest build to date. Cause I have that video. It's like this is my whatever. This is my you know um, my first build, my favorite build, my smallest build, my cheapest build, and then my biggest build. Um, so I'm probably going to have to update that because it's not true anymore. And my favorite build has changed too because I've made some pieces um, beyond my favorite build. Also. Bob Ross Energy. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. What's up, Corey's on the live. Hey, man. Love this. I love building small things. Swapping the deck. <laughs> uh, I like that. That's good. Yes, I am. We are finally, finally, swabbing the deck. Being pretty liberal with this brown paint. More hit. Looking great. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hope you guys are all enjoying. We just got a nice dump of snow here in southern Ontario, so it's looking gorgeous, but um, I'm, uh, I'm nervous for drivers. It is. It's a little sketchy on the first first real snow here. Yeah. All right. And again, guys, if you missed any part of the the building ship, go check out my live on YouTube. I've got all the videos for um, the the live building of this ship on my YouTube channel, as well as piles of other tutorial videos. So uh, be sure to check it out there. Still super jazzed that um, Nerdforge, you know, called me out, mentioned me in her latest YouTube video. That is such a huge man. What a what a I don't even know what to call it. Just an honor. <laughs> Still pumped about that. We are so close to being finished this haul here. How long does it take you to do a full build on average? Oh man, it changes so much. Um, depends on the size and the detail, exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it really does. Like this build has been hours and hours. And it's funny that you say that because my latest like, TikTok is just like, this is what, this is what three hours will get you. <clears throat> this is what 50 hours will get you. So really, <clears throat> yeah, size, detail, and like, yeah, um, energy too. Like that, that one that the three hours is, is um, like no interior and I'm like, it, it's a speed build. So the point of it is just to like, how fast can I build this? Whereas I'm like, ones like this are like, yeah, I want to, I want to get moving on it, but um, it's not a speed build because it's gonna, I just know it's gonna take a lot of sessions. So, yeah. Alright, now we're just gonna clean up these windows here. And they're gonna be gold. I wanna, I wanna accent all of these um, windows with gold. But for now, we're just gonna give them a brown. Brown's actually a good uh, base coat for gold because um, gold has those yellow textures. So like for like iron and, and metal, black is a good base coat. And then for um, gold, you know, brown is a good because of uh, the similarity. So this works out. 
And I might go back in here with a smaller brush to get a little bit more of those details. Um, make sure we get a nice base coat, but also um, the wash. So I'm going to be doing a wash after this because of how big it is. The wash is just going to help get into all those areas that um, I'm just not getting with the brush that you can kind of see the foam through. And it's just going to help give more of a uh, well-rounded look to it. Um, so from scratch, that's awesome. Do you have other videos showing how to start a ship? I have all of my um, lives on how I built this, so you can literally like you you can you can skip through, watch, see how I just um, lay the whole ship out um, from start to finish, like no cuts, no nothing. Um, just because of like for me to make a full tutorial on this, I'd love to make tutorials uh, for huge builds like this that are very comprehensive. Um, but when I started it, I didn't start it um, right. So I decided that I'd go with the, um, the just the, um, the live route. So if you want to watch that, um, all the videos are on the YouTube so you can see exactly how I build this ship. But it's very wingy. I like to wing my builds. Um, that's part of the fun. I feel like it's part of the charm of my builds are a little bit kind of um, wonky. I like, I say, I give them the wonk is what I call it. The wonk factor. You know, things don't always line up for me. This gorgeous, you're doing amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, what did you use for those windows? So I actually, for the windows I used, um, I think it's called Granny Grid that I got from the dollar store make the grid and then I just use beads also from the dollar store just to kind of I just glued them around um, to make kind of an ornate frame looking thing and I think when they get painted gold they're going to look like a, a really good um, uh, a really good you know pirate window and yeah you can see there's a lot of kind of cool blue foam in there but when I do the wash that should soak in and I'm going to use a brown ink and that should kind of soak into all the little cracks and stuff. So that looks like our main area here. It's coated up pretty good. There we go. Um, let's see if we can't grab our little deck here. I want to make sure that I dry all these pieces without having them together because um, I don't want them to uh, dry together. I've got a little bit left here. Let's see if we can drag this. Now these. These are a little fragile, so I'm going to have to be a little careful with those. I might have to use the lighter brush to get that railing because I don't want to bust it. Because the thinner foam, yeah, you just got to be careful with the thinner, <coughs> thinner foam. Did you get the inside of the captain's doors? Um, yeah, for the most part, the best I could there. But again, the wash, I'm going to try and... <coughs> Take care of any little wash there. Hey, thanks for the follow. Hey, I love your models and your videos for from one model to another. Oh, thank you so much. I yeah, appreciate that. I'm always uh, I'm always happy to follow another miniature artist as well. Um, I love I love seeing other people's creations. It's it's really rewarding. all these little and these are all just little toothpicks that I uh, just stuck into the styrofoam and I might have to mix up some more here and again I think I might have to use a gentler brush when I'm doing that top rail there just so I don't uh, tear it off it's a, it's a it's a really thin piece get that railing and these are here are just toothpicks and beads too that add kind of just a nice little bit of detail to the to the ship all over and you can always add more after you're done painting too you just paint them up and then glue them on so I didn't want to clutter it up too hard with them um, with too much detail because then it's a little, a little finicky when you're doing this kind of stuff but um, 
I think we got just the right amount. And I have to glue that one back on as well. Let's see if we can get that wriggling. Thanks for the follow there. Appreciate that. What's up? Alright. These railings, once they're all together, seem to be holding pretty well, so. It's just this thin little piece here. I think it's already kind of got a little bit of a snap. Some some of the pieces got a little um, a little banged up in the move when I was moving. Um, to here and then I gotta move again here. I think we're close here. Yeah. Awesome. Just a nice coat of brown. Mod Podge brown paint. Nice coating going on. If I get all the way around here. And then really after this, we just have like the, the top deck, which is um, it's a lot less uh, surface area, so hopefully that'll get painted up um, quicker. quicker here. And then we'll just be left with the mass and putting it all together. Doing those little bit of that, that little, uh, you know, the dry brushing and watching that, that's going to be really fun to watch that all kind of life. The one effects looks really, uh, really good. Oh, thank you. So cool. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, let's just see what I'm doing. Yeah, we're doing pretty good for time here. Um, let's, let's do it. I got to grab a little bit more, a little more Mod Podge here. So this is all I'm using for uh, for this base coat is just uh, some Mod Podge. Dump a good amount in there. And there we go. And then we're just gonna throw in some. And we coffee stained our sails already, so they're gonna look really sweet against this. Uh, really sweet against the wood and it's gonna all come together really really nicely so let's dump a bunch of brown in there and this is the cheaper brown because I knew I was gonna be using a lot of it for this base coat um, and let's dump some black in there because I do want a nice dark base coat there we go yeah, mix that all together I think we might need a little, a little bit more black to match our other color there. Because you want a nice dark base coat so that it kind of hides all the, hides all the imperfections. And uh, yeah, because it would be in the recessed areas there. You're back, hey, welcome back. Here, almost at 240. Yeah, I'm almost at 240. I know. I'm so I'm so appreciative to everybody that's uh, that follows and watches, and um, that doesn't give up on me and unfollows. You no, know, it's been a little bit crazy for me. I promise. I'm I'm, I'll be, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit more brown. A little bit more color in there. Yeah, there's no crazy formula here for this. This is. Rock and rolling. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue a couple of these things on quickly here. Oh, that's not on. All right, so we're gonna have to wait. My hot glue gun is not on. I think I saw something about that the bane, bane of existence. So let's grab our top deck. So we've got our bottom. The hull done. Now we're gonna paint the top deck. Rock and roll. And we got this thing here. I just used toothpicks and cardstock to make a nice little hinge there. That's the thing. Oh yes, you found your stream. Hey, hey, welcome to the stream. 
So this one's gonna be, I feel like this is gonna go really quick. We're already making great time. It's only 11.30 and it's gonna start at 11, so. Doing great. And this is gonna come to life even more. So we're getting the base coat on and then we're gonna get the, um, the dry brushing on. And then we're gonna get, and then when you start adding in, like put on the little crates and little coils of rope and all that kind of like little detail stuff, it's really gonna start pulling everything together. The masks with the sails and the ropes and the, yeah, it's, I'm excited to see this piece. And then we, we've got cans to put on and the, uh, the, the steering wheel. I'm totally blanking on the name for, is, is it just called, like, is it just called a steering wheel? I should know this. I can't believe I'm blanking on this. I feel like it's got a different name for the wheel, but the ship's wheel. Uh, it's all as miniature figures. You can tell. Have I done any 3D printing before? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do actually. I actually have a business um, for uh, custom keycaps. So I uh, I design uh, custom keycaps for uh, mechanical keyboards, and then I 3D print them, and then uh, I sell a uh, paint, paint them, and then uh, yeah, people keep buy them. So you can check us out at Etsy. It's all caps. Um, all caps keys is, is our store name. So I run that with my wife. Um, we do that together. So yeah, I do know about 3D printing. Actually, unfortunately, this week my one 3D printer went down. Um, so I had to go and get a new one. So we got the uh, the LA Du Mars uh, 2 Pro. So uh, that, that's if you actually hear a humming in the background, that is my 3D printer running. Just a ship wheel or a boat's wheel, I believe. Okay, so I uh, wasn't too far off. Nice. I'm not totally losing my mind. We're just waiting for our hawk move gun to heat up so we can fix that other, uh, the captain's, the captain's roof. I don't know what you call it. We're just doing big strokes over everything right now. We got a little cutouts here for where our cannons are going to go. And I do have to print off some more of the cannon wagons, or whatever you want to call them, um, for the cannons to sit in. I've got all the cannons printed. They're all in the hull, because you can't have a ship without cannons. But um, I don't have all the little rest. Getting close with this though. I'm just excited to see the ground because, yeah, like I said, motivation on the project this big can kind of wane when you, you know, you're getting that far in, but it's like I, I try to see the joy in every step. Um, and painting is definitely one of, one of the, the big steps that I, I enjoy. The base coating, not entirely low, but it is cool to watch it start to take some character here and start, you know, kind of looking like actual wood. People often think that train building is, um, is, it has a lot to do with how you paint it and, and it definitely does have some, I won't discredit that too much, but um, it's actually a lot more to do with how you textured it is kind of dictates how your paint job will go. So, yeah. Wheel, love it. It's modified and painted. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's what this base is. So it's gonna add some good structural integrity to um, a lot of the finer details here, and a lot of the um, uh, all the styrofoam, right? So people are always like, oh, I wonder how he's so afraid of breaking it. But I was like, I'm really sure to because with Mod Podge and and this. Yeah, it does pretty well. Holds up pretty well. Well 
all that sound, huh? I said squeaky. I'm just going to try to go a little gentler around the rails so that I don't break anything off. And the thing is, after this is all on, we can add more detail to it, so we can always, always add more on. Mod Podge adds some strength and durability to the phone. Yeah, you got it. Exactly. That's why that's, uh, I was just saying, you know, there's, there's, they're coming out with new ones. Uh, <coughs> Primers that can actually get sprayed right onto uh, onto phone that don't contain aerosol, which would corrode the phone. Um, but I'm I'm wondering how much I'd want to use that because you know is it going to have the same structural integrity that you're going to get from uh, from Mod Podge? So I don't know. Uh, def I mean, obviously, definitely going to experiment with that because that could be a huge time save because this it's. <clears throat> you know, we're, we're making good time, but it's still a lot of time. But, uh, yeah, using the big brush definitely helps. And like I said, any of those little cracks, we're going to catch with the wash. So. Side. Does your ship have a name yet? Um, Sweet Anne's Revenge. Um, do you play any video games? Um, I, I do. I'm really on and off with it because um, I usually get really into a video game and then I'll play a lot and then um, I won't play video games at all. So I do play video games. Um, I built a gaming computer in January. So that was fun. Um, a little bit hard to get your hands on a graphics card, but managed to get myself my hands on a decent one. Um, but uh, I really like creative or like creative survival based building games. So um, really got into Satisfactory. Love that game. Still love that game. Um, and I'm trying to think of. I mean, obviously, I mean, like, I've always been into Minecraft, um, but there's a new one coming out called Icarus that I really um, jazzed for. It looks pretty sweet. But yeah, I'm not, um, you know, the full first-person shooter stuff and whatever. I mean, I love Assassin's Creed, and, uh, the Valhalla. That was fun. Uh, I'm trying to get into making playable D&D figures. Like, do you have any advice for beginners? Um, like if you're getting into terrain and stuff, um, I mean, the biggest advice is just like YouTube, go just YouTube, it's all on YouTube. So like, um, and you don't even have to, um, this isn't even a plug for mine, you, cause there's a lot of other great tutorial videos out there. Oh yeah, no problem. Let me glue you back on. Um, there's a lot of great stuff out there that shows like showing you how to do like beginner projects and what's it's your first ones, but um, you know, I've got a lot of videos that show like, like the tools I use. Um, like, I have a video on just like advanced tools that I have, and then, uh, well, sorry, 
I have a video that starts off starts off showing you what you can just you can get started with the dollar store um, supplies, and then moves up into like upgrades of you know if you're if you're more serious about it. But um, <clears throat> advice for a first build, I always say like don't 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 go crazy huge. Like don't try and build this shit. This was this was an endeavor even for me. I was like get your feet wet with something like um, just. I don't want to say easy, and you're more than welcome to go go hardcore. But um, that's like just like even like a little piece of like rock terrain or something, you know, something that's just like build your confidence, get a feel for the foam, you know, or maybe like some dungeon tiles or something like that. Something like get a nice easy win because that'll it'll feel good. You'll get a vibe for like your tools and your material, um, and then and then go from there. But experimentation, it's like just not being afraid to mess up because. One thing I know a lot of people are like, I got, I don't know how to do it. I want to be, I want to get it right. But the thing is, it's like, man, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's, it's just foam, and you're learning. So, I don't know. Those would be my kind of my biggest pieces when going into a hobby like this because foam is very. Forgiving. I rebuilt the structure of the ship like ten times um, on live, so you can watch me mess up. I've been checking out, uh, checking you out, and Brandon Studios and Brady's Oh, thank you. Keep it crafting is an absolutely Damien over the Keep crafting has great stuff, um, and his TikTok is super informative. So be sure to check out his videos. Trash Dragon Hobbies. <coughs> He's another one of uh, buddies of mine on 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 TikTok here. Um, so yeah, be sure. Uh, to check him out, and I know everyone's heard of Black Magic Craft. Um, you know his early stuff was is really good for for beginners. Um, so yeah, there's lots of great accounts out there for learning how to craft. But yeah, yeah, no, Cave of Craft for sure. Trash Dragon Hobbies, and you know yours truly. Uh, the Forge of Many Things is also another one. Ooh, yeah. Well, it's a great recommendation. Thank you, guys. I saw the Nerd Ford mentioned you. Yeah. I know. Stoked. I don't know how she found... Well, she found me on TikTok here, so I guess that makes sense. And then she saw that I had a YouTube, so... I just love that that's helping that. Because, um, yeah, I got... I'm, I'm just so honored and pumped. I got a, a lot of good... Um, um, feedback from from being in that video, so super stoked. Yeah, man, we're getting close with this here. Gotta make sure I catch any globbies. Uh, I kind of is who got me started. There you go. Yep, yeah. he's massive now. Ooh, I just tore off a little piece of railing. That is a okay because we have got the hot glue gun going. So, there we go. We are, we are close here, and I'm excited to even just put this on the other piece just to see what it all looks like together. Someone asked me if I had researched about shifts before I built this. I think it's clear I have not. I don't know any of the names. Um, but whatever that thing is that goes the very front that sticks out. I don't know if that's still the stern or if that's just the name of the area. I have a little hole for that thing to stick out of. <laughs> very professional. There we go. This really is actually doing a pretty good job of 
hold its own here. And I think our hot glue is hot enough. I'm gonna just get the other side of these stairs a bit. the inside of this hole piece here. He's Canadian, it's a boot. That's funny, because I, I never understand that. I was like, I would say about, but maybe it's because I say about, 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 about. It's about time. It's not so much boot, it's out. It's like bout. It's about, it's about time, it's about time. I don't know. I have a Canadian accent, right? I'm Canadian. I'm 100% Canadian. I'm from Northern Canada. Yeah. I, I live in Southern Ontario now, but I grew up in Northern, Northwestern Ontario, like one step away from the Arctic, so. All right. Now, I'm probably just gonna paint these backside here. Just, just to be safe. You don't want to have foam sticking out if you're setting this aside, you know? And of course, it'll probably just snap a few things off, so good for me. There we go. Guys, this is gonna get nice, nice and solid up. Now back on. Now let's just do a quick little look, see, Woo. at our fully, fully brown ship, and that, and see if we can gently paint on. Just leave one around there. This is going to be a big wash job when we go for the full. I'm going to wash the entire thing in a dark brown wash. That is going to be fun. Our, our hull is now brown. Whoa, whoa. We need to pop this off. And that is that. And so I don't want to um, I don't want to let them dry on top of each other because then they would be real bum to take apart. But I like to see them together there, show you guys that. And I'm gonna let these dry separately. We're gonna grab our masks here. And I'll do the easy one first here. So this just snaps onto our main piece here. Just like that. It's the fun of magnets. And we're just gonna slap on that paint. Two floors, you should say two detached pieces. You should say it has two detached pieces. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, so it's got it's got the it's got the top deck, it's got the hull, and then it's got the two removable masts, and then also the I'm gonna call it the stern. The stern pops out, so that's not jutting out, and it's going to have a sail attached to it so that you can kind of remove all the sails so if you want to play um, you can remove all like the the masts so you can see what's going on 
just in case there's like visibility because that was that's always a concern. I know that a lot with ships, and I'm like, hey, and they they'll just show them without the the sails so that people can see what's going on in the ship. Yeah. I got some little banding on there that we're going to be painting up metal. But it's just the base coat, so I don't know. This should also help um, with the structural integrity because these, these sometimes feel a little flimsy. And you can honestly put a dowel straight through these if you wanted to, you know, core them out. And, um, put a dowel through the center of your mass, or even just straight up use a dowel. But uh, when you do like a showcase video of the, uh, you have to use the Wellerman song, it'd be perfect. Ha <laughs> yeah, for real. That would be great. So Darth Slayer, welcome back, welcome back. Don't worry, don't forget anybody. I mean, uh, you remember me, you remember me, of course, man. You guys are active in my chats. I am in there. I try to, I try to, um, try to communicate as best I can with everybody as, as much as I can. Answer any questions. You know, if you got any, anything, I've had people reach out by email. I'm more than happy to to get back with answers for any of that. All right. Last one down. Oop. <laughs> that there. Yeah. And again, I'm not gonna snap that one in place. Don't want it to dry to anything. That'll be fine there. All right, now our big one here. And my hands are nice, getting nicely coated up here as well. Mad props to your patients, but there's stuff incredible. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, you never forget me. Yeah, no, of course I never forget you. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Yeah, we are getting, we are getting nice and messy with this one. So this is going to be it. This is going to be, this is, the ship is, is coming to a close soon. I'm excited to see the whole thing together with the cannons and the crates and the sails and everything. It should be a lot of fun. And then you can get out there on the table and be in campaigns and adventures. So I've been reading up on um, the Tomb of Annihilation campaign. And, uh, you know, it says they like. They just teleport, the, the adventurer teleports her to, um, to the island of Chult. And um, I was just reading out, I was like, kind of run this adventure, and I'm like, don't, don't, don't just teleport. Have them sail, have them, did that be an adventure of just getting there? And then I was like, oh, sail there, perfect time. There's pirates in Chult. You know, they'd be taking a ship to get, you know, they can take a ship, they can get canoes. So, lots of fun stuff there. Yeah. That's it, man. You've got a nice base coat on your fingers. I definitely do. I've got a very... Uh, what, 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 one of the ship, part of the ship? No, part of the crew, part of the ship, part of the crew, part of the ship? That's me. I am part of the crew, part of the ship. How do you like that? Yeah. And what it like to, because I want to have the mass removal and I wanted to make sure that the whole like it's easy to move the pieces around. I didn't add all like the ropes and the riggings that would be in an actual ship because that just wouldn't make sense to, to put that on there because it'd be really hard to move. You know, I already I added the um, kind of a rope ladder. I think that's important, but um, <clears throat> we made that removal. 
I would, I would have loved to add all the radius because I think that adds a lot of fun, like, rope detail. And I'm going to see what I can't do to kind of fake that in. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's this. This is getting everywhere on me here. I'm part of the ship. I am the ship. Part of the crew. Part of the ship. some of that nice fibers from the rope on me. If you want a cheap rope for your miniatures, just buy some twine from the dollar store and uh, un unravel it. And that's it. That's all I use for mine. And it, it gets this great cordage. Perfect, perfect to scale cordage. You can also use string if you want, but then you kind of, usually it's string is white, so you kind of have to Dye, dye, you know, stain it a color or something, which is totally, if you want more of like a cleaner looking rope, the, the string works better than the, the twine, it gets a little hairy, but um, that hairy twine look actually goes really well for a nice rough miniature rope look. I'm trying to be sort of gentle with this thing, because this is pretty thin, the crow's nest here. That's no problem. We'll glue that on here. I don't sell these pieces as they would be. I've spent countless hours on these pieces, so it really wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to sell them at the prices that they'd have to be for me to make it worth it at all. But I like to show people how to make them and. Um, if there's a way I can figure out how to, to do it, um, to sell, I mean, I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah, I like to show. I like to teach people how to make miniatures. Let's see. Oh, I should get that underside there. That looks ugly. And any spot that we miss, it's going to get covered up with the wash. So we are almost, let's see, tuck in under there. Let's see, this is really going to paint my hand. I'm going to just, yeah, look at that, that's nice and gunky. I'm going to say they look incredible and be hard to let go, although uh, I would also expect a hefty price tag one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they would definitely be um, hefty if I did. It would be really hard to let go some of some of these big ones, especially just one with the time and the effort that goes into them. It would, you, honestly, that'd be a hefty price you'd have to give me just to uh, emotionally let go of them. <laughs> But, uh, you know, once, once my house is completely overwhelmingly full, um, I might be forced to sell them. We'll see. We'll see. I'll keep you guys posted. My hand is getting a really nice coat of, of uh, part of the ship. I'm just trying to get this rope up. Nice look because we'll go over with some lighter colors. But I want to get rid of that clean white look because it's a it's a grimy ship. There we go. 
Yeah, actually, he's done a decent job of getting both sides here. touch them because I don't want to get them too much with my one hand but we've got our sails to go on our nice aged pirate sails so there we go all right guys well um, I'm gonna take this apart so it doesn't all stick together while it dries but that is the pirate ship base coated and next time we're going to be painting the whole thing dry brushing, getting the wash on, and giving it, making this thing come to life. So, do you have to do any dioramas in class in here to find out what you're... <laughs> no, I never did actually. This uh, this is a hobby I picked up when I was, what, 25, 26? Um, and uh, yeah, we're just coming on three years of experience here, so it's been a pretty early thing. Never too late to start, never too late to start crafting. Anyway, Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you missed out on any of this, check me out on YouTube. Um, uh, my entire ship build is live streamed onto my YouTube channel um, <clears throat> as well, because I'm live on TikTok and I'm live on YouTube right now. Um, whoops. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, and, uh, yeah. If you, if you like what I do, check out, check out my YouTube. Learn how to make this stuff yourself and all kinds of other videos and tutorials, you know. Follow, subscribe, all that jazz. But thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, keep on crafting. Have a good Thanksgiving. <laughs>